back is hot. The bell show is hot. Good Mike. Um, brought Mike Harsty on board. He's a big crew fan. Um, we're going to talk about, well, we probably should have did this a couple months ago, but we're going to talk about the crew doing a big summer tour and coming out of their retirement and how you feel about the whole crew thing. Well, I was excited. I was excited that, uh, because I thought that I wasn't going to see me more. I really got, when they got back together in 05 and I saw them on Carnival Sins, I really, really like got into them. And every time they came around, we went, heck, we went to Vegas and saw them at the residency. Yeah, you got a residency. And uh, so when I found out they got to come back again, I was excited because these guys aren't getting any younger. So uh, I didn't think it would do it. Yeah, I, I, I told everybody. That uh, was hoopla. I told uh, Ross Ryan kept telling me, they're going to come back, they're going to come back. And I said, nope, nope. So then, of course, I had to text him and tell him I was wrong. <laughs> uh, but I, I don't know. I was excited. It'll be good. It, it's, it'll be entertaining. Yeah, I guess I guess the best way I can talk about it is, you remember Raymond Knupp? Mm-hmm. All right, so you know he's a big crew fan back in high school. Well, he saw me out in town. He said, um, what do you think about the crew doing their doing this reunion tour when they said they wasn't going to do it no more? I said, well, I said the first day I was kind of like, I'm not going. This is bullshit. You know, I, they said they were done, and I was done and everything. Well, the second day went by. Started kicking around. I'm like, you know, this is freaking Motley Crue. I've been a fan forever. And to be I got honest, I saw Steel Panther done an interview, even though they had all that beef with Nikki Six a couple weeks ago, that they said that it was good for the hard rock scene, that Motley was coming back, that it was going to help that genre of music. And I was like, well, I guess if Steel Panther says it's cool, I guess we'll just say it's cool. That gives me a reason to go see the crew. So that's kind of where I was at. Um, yeah, I thought it was – I told everybody the same thing. It ain't happening. Even when they talked about Live Nation leaked it out, I was like, that's not going to happen. They said they were done. They did the contract and all that. I was the same way. And the only thing that is a little aggravating is everybody that paid all that money yeah. on the final tour for – like when they did the Cruise Nest, um, God, I remember, the looking at the, I remember looking at the prices of them just to look and – these people paid yeah. ungodly amounts of money because it was be the last time. Well, now you can do the same. You know, you can do it all. Yeah. All, I think some of their packages are three to four thousand. It was ridiculous. Because uh, I, well, Tommy, you can meet Tommy in this one. Tommy was never. Oh really? Yeah, you, you never met Tommy in any of the packages for. But now you can meet all four of them, and I don't know. You get a guitar, and I don't know for three grand. I'd, I need to be on stage or, or something. Three thousand dollars, four thousand dollars. But that's the only thing. And then, of course, Mick Mars made that comment. Oh yeah, yeah. like if yeah. we do it again, and I, you know, everybody gets free a free ticket or whatever. So of course he's caught our you know yeah, a lot of a, a lot of, of static for that. Well, but as far as yeah, I was like when I first saw it transpiring, and then the, it, it was looking like some some of the sources are pretty good. I was like, I was like, oh yeah, I was like you, you see him again. I was like. This would be good. I didn't even care who was with them. I, I, I didn't care. I didn't care who yeah. was with them. They, I mean, they, they, their shows just. I mean, they put on a good. Yeah. As far as entertainment, like I pay a lot of money. I'm. I want to be entertained, and yeah. they always entertain me. You can say whatever you want to about Vince's voice, and this, that, and the other. At the end of the day, when I, whenever I've left one, I, I was entertained. Yeah, I and mean, it, it was a good I'll show. That. I mean, Vince. The whole Vince thing was, you know, take it with a grain of salt. Because I remember Jonathan Kipps talking about, he was giving me a hard time. I think he went to Crew Fest 1 or Crew Fest 2, and he said, man, why did you tell me about Vince? I said, dude, I thought everybody knew that this is how Vince sounds. I mean, I thought everybody knew that, but evidently not everybody knew. No, but, I mean, I don't know. The way I look at it, it's Vince Neal. I mean, yeah. you've got to have those four. Because you were at Crew Fest 2 when Tommy had his hand hurt. Yeah. And uh, who filled in Stone? Was it Stone Sires? Uh, oh, they had, they had a place with drummer. Yeah, I don't remember. Who it was. Anyway, it was a good show, but even then, I don't know. I could tell if you don't have all four of them together, yeah. that chemistry. That's, whether they hate each other or not, when they get on stage, there's just a chemistry there. Yeah, that and that's what you're used to seeing. That's what we grew up on, and it's kind of like any band, you know, without the originals. Even though they don't get along, that's what we want to see. 
Yeah, but yeah, when the like when I was seeing it, I was texting. There's this guy I go to the shows with all the time. I text him. He's a big crew fan. I text him right away, and um, taking my son. That'll be uh, cool. uh, but one boy's already seen him once, but he's going again too. And then my other one, he's never seen him, so he's oh, like, "Well, yeah, I gotta go." So yeah, so like he gets to go. You know, these guys are just they're gonna start dying. Yeah, I mean they really are. <laughs> yeah. I mean, old age is getting all of us. I mean, and they're not gonna be. It's not gonna be around no more. So you'd be like. I mean, Man, I miss it. Yeah, you figure we had a pretty big scare with Ozzy. I mean, Ozzy yeah. got Parkinson's disease. Yeah, I saw him right before he got sick at last time and canceled all those shows. And you so. figure Ozzy's a big part of Motley Crue's history. Oh, I mean, yeah. Yeah, that's where the dirt, I mean. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Stuff on the dirt. Especially that scene in the dirt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the, the snorting ants and the yeah. licking the piss. Oh, and, yeah. <laughs> that was, that was, but that was Ozzy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you got what you got. That's right. So we're gonna um, we're gonna watch the contract being blown up. Uh, I didn't. I wasn't for sure if Mike had seen this or not, but we figured we just. I think what Machine Gun Kelly does the talking on this. Yeah, that's Machine Gun Kelly. So we're gonna give this a spin, and then we'll talk about the contract a little bit. In 2014, Motley Crue announced their final tour, putting an end to almost 35 years on the road. To make it official, they signed an unprecedented contract. In the years since, Motley Crue became more popular than ever and gained an entirely new legion of fans who, along with diehard crew heads, demanded the band tear up that stupid contract and come out of retirement. They knew that if they were ever to stand on stage together again, that contract would have to be destroyed. Well, destruction has never been an issue for Motley Crue. Yeah, it just get, I don't know, it gets me excited. I don't know, yeah, I was going to say, I just sat here and think, man, this is really going to happen. Yeah, like, I saw, when I saw that, I knew it was legit. Here's yeah. the other thing, and, and like I said, that guy that I send stuff to told me, if they had time to make this, <laughs> make that video and produce that and do that, like, this was in the works. This was. A while back. Did you hear how this was let out of the bag? The guy that, I guess he's. The manager for you know the Black Crows are doing their big yeah. tour. See, he went on Howard Stern and he said guitar is back. All the big bands. That's right. And he, he, let, he, 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 he let it leak. And Nicky said, you know, it had been in the works, you know, but he let the cat out of the bag. Well, it's money. It, it really boils down to money. You know, they're getting a lot of money yeah. to do this and. If you were them, would you, you know, was it 150 million? Oh, yeah, it was some crazy. Yeah, amount. so, yeah, I like, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't blame them. I don't blame them for doing it. They're going to, they'll, they'll, they'll pack the places, to whether they sell them out or I don't know. And we talked about it earlier, they kept saying the stadium tour, and I kept thinking football stadium, and I'm like, there's no way that they're going to pack a football stadium. Of course, I never thought about a baseball stadium. Yeah, I never, I never and, did neither. And uh, and so they'll get, they'll get pretty, you know. And then you know when you throw the bands that they they're bringing with them, you know, oh, yeah, on board. Agree. And there's another band that's but I saw this week that they're that's going to be opening up for Jim yeah, Jet. I've never heard of them. Yeah, I could. So I remember, guess they're just like a filler. But I've heard good stuff about. Yeah, it's my mind draws a blank right now who that was. But you know when you and but see they're co-headlining too. So, I guess you never know what you're gonna. I, I mean, I don't. I think the show in D.C. The way I understand it, Cruz headlining that show. See, and Curtis Ritchie told me that. And he was I think if you sure. look at them, it's the way. The, the way I was understanding is like whoever's first on the top is who the headliner is. Yeah. They've got all four bands, but they flip flop Crew and Def Leppard for certain stadiums. Now I don't know if any truth to that or not yeah i'm not for sure um and they're, they're claiming the dirt you know has made has brought them back in the limelight which it has i mean the movie was it was a great documentary whether it was the biopic how true that was i mean we'll probably never know but i figured you know I've, that's what i was telling somebody 
my daughter was saying, well, such and such friend of hers, her age said, they said all this stuff's made up. And I said, well, and you know as well as me, I remember the stuff happening. Yeah, I some of that stuff I remember. Razzle dying, that was a big deal yeah, in high school. Oh, that was huge. And you know Skylar dying, I know that's that was true too. There was a lot of stuff I remember. Mm-hmm. When Nikki, know, Nikki about. OD'd? Yeah. Yeah. Now, I don't remember it being on the news that no. 96 had died. Like, I don't remember that. But I remember the Razzle stuff. Oh, I remember that all yeah, I remember, yeah, that Yeah, that was – especially for that that time period. Oh, you know, yeah. That I was, mean, he got away – I mean, he just got slapped on the wrist. Well, he got 30 stuff. days. I mean, yeah, he got 30 days. I don't think but he you know, going, like 20 But, you know, he also had a – you know, you can say what you want, but you still got to walk around the rest of your life knowing that. And that's, that's, a, that's, that's heavy. Well, and if you want to thank karma, I mean, he lost his daughter – yeah, a pretty and that, age. That's, that, which is horrible. I mean, he's been yeah. through two massive, uh, devastating – they're tragedies. Yeah. Both of them are tragedies. And, you know, he's – And to you know, still keep his sanity. And, 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 yeah, he somehow he kept his sanity. He's still been able to, you know, do what he does. And, you know, I think it – you know, I think it probably bothers him way deeper than than people probably oh, – Yeah, you know, they want to they wanna poke at him and this, that, and the other – but my gosh, I mean, look at those two tragedies. Look what he's been through. Look at what they put their bodies through. The whole look, band, you know, just with everything, along with all that success. Look at, look at everything that's come along with it, also. But you know, they, um, the the rock and roll lifestyle part they signed up for the those <laughs> personal tragedies. You know, no one signs up for. And no, I just think that's that's you know. I'm sure there's probably some depression issues with that. I mean, oh, we, we I got think. kids. I yeah. can't imagine. I cannot imagine going through that. But, uh, you know, and, and to be like, you know, so Vince had to go, you know, and be sober through all that. You know, that was part of his not being in jail because he couldn't make money unless he was out to pay his fines. But to have that and to be around, you're not. You're supposed to be sober, and everybody else is just partying to the max. You know, doing you know. Nick well, they said like that Moscow that. Peace Festival thing oh, they yeah. did was supposed to be a big sober thing, and I read some article. I think it was Sebastian Bach, and he was like, you know, everybody was pulling out everything, and Vince probably had to be sober through all that. Oh yeah. And, well, when they did Feel Good, they were sober. Suppose, feel Good was yeah. you know, and and Feel Good was a great album. I mean, yeah. it, obviously, it was the last great. Probably album that they album. that they did. I liked Saints of Los Angeles. Uh, Generation Generation Swine wasn't too big. New Tattoo wasn't too big. But I I'm a partial fan to. Uh, I like the self titled with John Carabbi. But yeah, that was a that album is yeah, a lot well. of people were like how great it was a good album. I just well, it you, wasn't it wasn't it, was, it wasn't it was like it wasn't the Motley Crue that I've yeah. always enjoyed. But it was, it was a good album. And um, it's, it's some really good music on it. It's got some good tunes on it. But, uh, like, but when I want to hear Motley Crue, like, I want to hear Vince. Like, when he did Exposed, that oh, sounded yeah, like that a crew was, album. The yeah. second, the Carver and Stone was yeah, horrible. It was awful. Exposed was oh, it's, amazing. I saw him up at Honey Bears. Remember Honey yeah, Bears? I went to that show. And, yeah, uh, Steve Stevens was the guitarist. Yeah, oh, and uh, Robbie he, Crane was was uh, played the bass. And, uh. Um, that was a great show. What a and he did all that solo. Like, but now like I've seen him two more times on a solo tour. Yeah, I don't. And he doesn't that, sing. Nah. He sang tattoos and tequila the one time. But I don't think. But he, does he doesn't do else. like nothing off of exp- and exposed to such a. That's funny. You talk about album. that tour, and we was talking earlier about somebody giving me a hard time about Kirk Hammett. But you got to put Stevie Stevens in oh, the yeah. same as a guitar great. I mean, he's he played awesome. with Billy Idol this summer and had a friend of mine that went up there and I, he told me he was going up to see it and I said Steve Stevens is going to yeah, rip it smokes. apart and he told me later he said he was incredible yeah, he's yeah he, he's, a, he's a very good guitar player yeah but I don't want to get rambling too much about nah. Steve Stevens yeah. but um, I was telling Mike we Motley Crue actually released Shout to Devil 2019 official video which from what I understand I haven't watched it yet because I saved for this, but it was from The Dirt. There yeah, was I've never, clip, I didn't even know they had it. There was a clip where they just did a little brief of it, but they actually did the whole video, and that's what this is supposed to be. So me and Mike's going to watch this, and then we'll talk about this a little bit too. You ready? Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah, I've never seen that before. Yeah, I'd never seen it either. That's pretty cool. Uh, Machine Gun Kelly had to take drum lessons. You know that? Uh-uh. Yeah, he had to take he had to drum lessons. Then Tommy Lee had to like help him out some so he could play like Tommy. I know when I went back and watched Dirt, I watched it a couple of times, and they really they really nailed the characters. And yeah. when I watched it, I thought you know even even the moves that the dude that played Vince Neil. Oh yeah, like when you um that opening one. I just watched it the other day. As long as I remember it so well, was. Their first gig when they're at all and they did a piece, you know, a piece of your action when he's there doing that move like Vince. You've seen in videos, yeah. They, oh yeah, like they really they had it down pretty good. It was entertaining. That the was an entertaining. Movie. I thought it was awesome. But you know what my favorite part of the biopic was? If um when Machine Gun Kelly goes, this is a twenty four hour. This is me, 24 hours. Oh, yeah. And it's like, he yeah. starts out, he's, you know, breaks the handcuff on the bed and shows how he ends up getting handcuffed at the end. That's probably one of my favorite parts of the whole movie because I figure that was probably pretty much spot on for Tommy. Oh. Because he was hyper anyway. Yeah, he he pinged his personality pretty good. Yeah. But they, it was all good. It was it, it was good. And, um, like, I got some people I work with and everything I pushed it's like you gotta watch it you gotta watch it and some of them watched it and they're like they, a lot of them told me the, the biggest thing to say was I can't believe they're still alive <laughs> yeah. that's what they say I can't believe they're well, still alive look back at, I and can't I, either. I can't believe they're still alive I mean but uh but yeah it'll be good I already, like I told you I already got my tickets for uh the one show this this summer so uh, I wanted to catch two but I don't know if I will or not they're, they're kind of pricey well it's like you know not, one day I'm like I'm going, and then the next day I'm like, how you not go? And then it's like you know, at the end of the day, it's like and they're watching all that, and I'm like, it just gets me back in the mood. Oh yeah, you, you gotta like, go you see know, them again. This is, this is. I mean, I lived and breathed this stuff back in the day. But like, what are they gonna do after this? Like, I think there's only so many tours they can do because the the set list is probably gonna be about the same as it, as it always is. Yeah. You're paying a lot of money. You want to see those songs. And yeah, you, you know can't. it's just those songs, but you know uh, if you've seen well, I know you saw the uh, the end, the movie, the yeah. end, where Tommy's like, I can't play the songs, I just can't do it. Well, you know, for 150 million dollars, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's not, it's not hard to play the up. songs. Come on, Tommy, you gotta be on board for you this. Know. This is millions. And they're like, you know, we're not playing uh, fairs and this, that, and the other. And then Vince was out there, you know, playing playing fairs and everything, which. Hey, I saw him at the West Virginia State Fair. Great show. That was a great show. And you actually, know, he sent, you know, Vince sounded real good at that, sh- at that show. Well, and it's like, you know, but when you're with, because somebody said something, and I never really looked at this aspect. When you're with a bunch of friends that you hung out with in high school, a one-off night, and you're going out, you're having a couple beers, and you're listening, it might not be spot on. But it's still Motley Crue. This is the stuff you remember from high school. Oh, this yeah. Stuff. And it sets the mood. I mean, it don't have to be spot on because you're with your pals and you've had a couple to drink, and it's Motley Crue. Yeah, that's right. But, um, yeah, well, I was going to say Ricky Rackman was talking about the contract, and he said, you know, he said when you can say what you want about the contract, but he said, you know, he's like, it's, it's like if I signed a contract, said, I'm not going to drink any more coffee. Well, what's going to happen if you break that contract? That's right. You know, is there There's laws? no ramifications. <laughs> yeah, I mean. If all of them just break the contract, what's, there's no ramifications. Yeah, there, because it never was. They said it was a legal abiding contract, but when you break it down, it really wasn't. It was a cool concept and all that, but. I suppose mixed health is good enough to go back out because he's. You know, with that, I think yeah. that disease and, and and everything, he was was getting. He could still play. Every time I saw him, he played phenomenal. He just plays phenomenal. But you know, it's got to take a toll on him. Oh yeah, it's just got to take a toll on him. Well, when my wife went and saw him, her and my son went and saw him up in West Virginia. She was close enough stage that she actually saw them. Basically, Mick held his elbows out like this, and security actually had to carry him up steps. Really? Because he couldn't walk up steps. But the man's still playing spot on. Oh, yeah, he plays really good. So, Well, I guess we're going to wrap this up, Mike. You got All any right. more you want to say about 
We know Motley Crue rules. I don't guess anything needs to be said. No, it'd, it'd it. be a good tour. It'd be a good time. Like you said, it's just a good time. You go listen to that music live. It takes you back to yeah. a, to another place. And it's just a good time. And, it, and it's just all about having fun. And people will be pissed off about it. This, that, and the other. But at the end of the day, everybody that goes is going to have a good time. You know, you're yeah. going to have a good time. And, and not only just with them. I mean, like I said, the other bands. It's yeah. going to take you back to a, you know, you're just going to have a really good time. And, and, and if you're... And, and I guess if you're on, whether you're on kind of the, well, I don't know if I want to go, you probably better go. If, if yeah. you're that close to going, you're going to regret if you don't Oh, go. yeah, absolutely. Um, I guess we're going to, I guess the usual, like, subscribe. And I guess if you got, hell, if you want to ask Mike anything, just shoot me a comment and I'll send it to him. <laughs> um, Y'all answer. And we'll get back with you. I guess we're going to roll on out of here. Until mm. next time. Later, y'all. Thank <laughs> you.